Why, baby, that's hurtful. Why, why do you say that? I'm tearing up right now thinking about yeah, yeah. it. What's the commitment you have to your show? Bobby, thank you for always giving us what you had with whatever you had. I mean, if there's a message you want to give to a man or to a father, yeah. what message would that be? <laughs> What's your approach to your children? Just like I have a appointment in my calendar for my gym mm -hmm. and appointment in my calendar for my clients, there's an appointment in the calendar for the kid. And they get all of me in that moment. So I'm not consumed by business conversations during my time with, your... time with, time with the kids. Got it. And it's funny, too, is because the kids, you know, in transit, uh, I'll make calls in the, in the car. And now with Bluetooth in the car, you can mm -hmm. hear throughout the speakers. It's funny. My kids pick up the language. Mm. You know, like, uh, like Joji, he's nine years old. Hey, Poppy, uh, who's running a million point bay shop? Mm. Who's running a million dollar agency? Mm. Would you, would you pick up this language, right? Yeah, he's, he's listening. He's to listening. It. Hey, hey, Poppy. Uh, so, so what does Poppy do? Uh, my Poppy uh, helps people with money and make money. Where'd you get that? I didn't teach you that. I didn't tell him that. Right. But he's just, he's just, he's just listening. He's just listening. He's putting two and two. What do you think that's had? What, what, what type of impact do you think that's having on his psyche? Well, number one, that the language of money is being deposited into him. Because when I was growing up, money was never discussed. And uh, matter of fact, if you brought it up, it was a bad, it was a bad subject to bring up. Uh, <laughs> first, let's get the idea out there that yeah. you grew up wealthy. I mean, let's get rid of that. Oh, I I'm broke. I grew up broke. You were making 40, 50, 60 grand. In my mind, you were a millionaire. So let's take this back to JoJo. Yeah. So here he is in the car, mm -hmm. listening to these type of conversations. Yeah. And so one of the things I'm getting is because he's spending time with his dad and He's in these conversations, and Jordan, as he grows, he'll yeah. be, I mean, he'll be learning this yeah. from the car seat on. How do you think they'll feel about money because of who you're being for them? They're going to know that money is a tool, mm. and it's just going to allow them to do greater things in their life. And it's not something that's just reserved for the wealthy. Wealthy Wealth, wealth starts beyond its manifestation in your checkbook or in your wallet, mm. right? Wealth is a man manifestation with already starting in your, your conscious spirit, your energy. Your, your money flow starts with your energy flow. Right. And so so he's going to learn how to master that energy to flow that money and manifest best of him mm. out there. And finance and money just allows him to multiply that. And by the way, my, my other kids, in addition to Jojo, my 24 year old, he can he can sell you anything. My, my son's a salesman. Got it. I love it. And by the way, salesman is a good thing. Yeah. Every, everybody that is an influence in your life is it's selling sales, you something, selling you something. Yeah. My twins, 18 year old girls, they know they know they know the hustle. Mm hmm. And, and and when they they wrote me a, a birthday card last year, they wrote something here. Bobby, thank you for always giving us what you had with whatever you had. Because that's that was my conversation with them. Listen, girls, when I, when you were being raised, uh, I wasn't as financially successful as I am today. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know, I gave you what I had when I had it. Got the it. best I had. The youngest was born. Jordan was born. Okay, you meet your brother. You meet your brother. Okay, downstairs. We're at Northwestern Hospital. Okay, meet me downstairs. Ruben. Milani, Soledad, you three, listen to me. I don't want you being upset, managing expectations up front. I don't want you being upset or envious mm -hmm. of your brother because when he was born in a different financial position, I was when you were his yeah. age. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want you being envious and jealous of him. But by the way, if you play your cards right, I'm not the type of dad that I'm going to wait till I die for you to live your inheritance, for you to get your inheritance. Mm -hmm. I want you to get your inheritance while you're alive. So I just had a conversation with my son about a month ago mm -hmm. about the snowplow business is going to start this this winter. Mm. So he needs to get that rolling. I'm going to invest in your business with a truck. With a snowplow, but you got it. But you got to organize. You got to do the work. Yeah, you got to do the work. I'm an investor in your business. I'm just not going to give it to you because you don't get anything you get for me or anything you have in your life for free. You got to work yeah. for it. You got to earn it. So, what was your relationship like with your dad? Uh, it's funny. I can talk now, yeah. and, and she has listened to this. She she's laughing right now. Okay, because she knows that the quietest room in the world is a room with my dad and I. Mm. No conversation. Why is that? Tough subject for me, bro. I, I, um. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> well, and, and here's let me let me tell you why I'm asking. Because as men, often we mimic what we see. Yeah. And I can ask the question with confidence, knowing and, and no fault to your dad, because he likely didn't have the yeah, example that correct. he needed because my dad did. And I know for me, I don't want to be like my dad when it comes to family. But you're creating something different. And I ask the question because sometimes I, I know as men, we'll create excuses and, well, my father wasn't there, et cetera. And what I'm noticing is that you're creating the life that you want to live despite whatever yeah. you've experienced. And for our fathers, they didn't have a roadmap like we have now. They didn't live in the information age. They grew up in the industrial age. They went yeah. to work, brought home the check, dropped it on the table. I've done what I need to do. Get a beer, mm -hmm. watch some TV. Hey, kids, don't bother me too much. Go to bed early. Get up, do the same thing the next day. So I asked about that because who you're being for your children. And I don't know if there's any part of that that drives you. But if there is, I, I mean, if there's a message you want to give to a man or to a father, yeah, what message would that be? Regardless of your upbringing, you have the power and choice and control to create the reality that you want today. 
Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I just wish my father had exposed me to a lot more when I was uh, younger and led me through conversation, through a lot of uh, life challenges as, as, as I was becoming a teenager and becoming a, a young man. I, just, I wish I had more dialogue. But here's what I appreciate about my father a lot. He did show me that work ethic. He did yeah. show me that I needed a, a provider, uh, yep. what, a, what that role should be like mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. one's life. Yep. He always said, no matter, don't wish me happy birthday, don't give me anything, but always take care of your mom. I so he did teach you something yeah. that you grabbed a hold of. Yeah. yeah. And I know acknowledgement and approval from my father is something I haven't, exp- I, I, I don't remember last experience. I can't remember the last time my dad said, I love you. Well, that's not something a baby boomer dad's going to say. No. And if there's a baby boomer dad listening, I think the message to them is that your children want to hear this. And, and I, I think there's an opportunity at any point for a man to make a powerful shift. I don't know what I would do if my dad told me. He said, I love you. I think I'm, pretty, I'm, I'm tearing up right now thinking about yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, you probably cry. Yeah. I mean, well, every human being wants some level of acknowledgement. Especially from their dad. Yeah. At least from, at least from my, me yeah. as a man. Yeah. There's something you're bringing to your children that you didn't get. What's the commitment you have to your children? It's funny. The conversation I have with them is everything I'm doing is for you. Yet they don't see it sometimes. Mm. Until mm. life hits them. Ah. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, that's what it was for. Like one, one, yeah. time, one time my daughter said, Papi, when you tell me you're all about family, I don't believe it. Mm. And that's, why, baby, that's hurtful. Why, why do you say that? Mm. Because I, I don't see it. And I said, well, you don't see the Cancun trip. You don't see the trip to Bahamas. You don't see the trip to Hawaii. You don't see, mm-hmm. really, you don't see it? And to her, that wasn't important. Yeah. And so she was driven by quality time. Right. Her love language mm-hmm. was quality time and acknowledgement and affirmation. Mm-hmm. Right? And so I needed a key in on that. On that. On that. Right. Because all the kids have different personalities. And I'm recognizing it now on my fifth kid. I didn't recognize my first three. I love that you're saying that, too, because what I'm getting from this is the work ethic that you've created, these commitments that you've dropped, that have created the financial wealth is actually allowing you to become a better father than a worse father. 100%. Got it. Uh, the best things in life aren't given to you for free. You know, uh, and if you want what you want, you gotta go get it. Go get it. Don't wait yeah. for somebody to give it to you. What would you say to your children right now if they're listening? You've got your life to live. You have to define what path you're going to follow. Be committed to that. Develop your unique skill set in whatever that unique passion or opportunity that you discover. And don't be a person that's hopping from this and this and that. Just stick stick with one thing. Master one thing. Make your money at it. And uh, uh, learn how to develop and grow from there. Love it, man. Want to talk about money? Sure. <laughs> yeah, speaking of which. <laughs> 